Hello and welcome back to Budget Wah. In today's video, we'll be going over the new Slaves to Darkness launch box, and we'll be going over the new releases announced at Nova Open and on Warhammer Community. So in this video, we'll be going over a slew of new releases from Games Workshop. Um, first and foremost among them, of course, being the new Slaves to Darkness launch box. We'll be going over the contents and the new plastic sculpts which are contained in this box. And we'll speculate a little bit as to how much the box might go for when they announce the price. And we'll do an overview of the predicted value of the contents of the box, both in terms of what you get on the tabletop and overall price. Next, I'll talk about the new destruction battle tomes and models, which were also announced at Nova Open, uh, specifically Sons of Behemoth and Ogre Ma tribes. And then we'll briefly go over a uh, new Warhammer Underworlds warband and some new content that Games Workshop recently announced for Cursed City. Let's talk about what this box is to start. This is a launch box or launch set for Slaves to Darkness. We haven't seen one of these in Age of Sigmar in a while. I, I don't believe since Lumineth Realm Lords have we had a box quite like this. We've been seeing them a lot more in 40k though with the uh, Beast Snaga Orcs, with uh, Black Templars, Chaos Knights, those sort of boxes. Essentially this is a kind of full reboot. Uh, Slaves to Darkness is getting more attention than average with this uh, new battle tome coming up. They're getting more new sculpts than some of the other factions, which we'll talk about later in the video. So they're getting this limited run launch box that contains several of the new sculpts and the new battle tome. The first of these new sculpts is the new Demon Prince, which is just a fantastic looking model. This guy was leaked earlier in the year and subsequently teased by Games Workshop earlier in the year, and he still looks great as ever. Um, they showed that you actually have a selection of heads for the model, which is really cool. You can go with the classic kind of Chaos Undivided head, which is shown on the model, or you can go with a specific Korn, Nurgle, Zinch, or Slanesh Demon Prince. There's also going to be accessories for both uh, uh, Age of Sigmar, like the wings, which are pictured here, or 40K. There's some more futuristic accessories, like a backpack kind of thing that you can put on your prints. So really cool. Uh, seems like a really cool set. I think he even gives Bellacor a run for his money in terms of level of detail. It's just an awesome model. And he's got the obligatory Games Workshop rock under his left foot, so they, they didn't forget that either. The big reveal from Nova Open is these new Chaos Chosen models. Uh, they're getting new plastic sculpts, and boy, do they look great. And they have command options included in the set, unlike the Chaos Warriors in the Start Collecting box, so that's, that's good. Um, you're going to get 10 of these, so two units of five or one big unit of 10 in the box, and they're just awesome. I'll show some more of them on the next slide. Not to be outdone, the Ogroid Theradons, which were originally announced at uh, Warhammer Fest, are also included in this set. And these are a brand new unit. Um, they're going to be getting a new War Scroll in the new Battle Tome. They also have command options here, so no problems there. And uh, they look great. I think they look better than the Ogroid Myrmidon hero from uh, Slave to Darkness Warcry. And uh, yeah, they're awesome. I'm excited to see what they do in the game. Perhaps the only uh, miss for me on the aesthetics of the box is the cover of the Battle Tome, which isn't really a big deal. Um, it's a Battle Tome. You're getting the Battle Tome with the box. This is the limited edition. I do much prefer the kind of full color spread art on the front, kind of like with the Dominion box. But maybe this is more your jam if you like a more subdued look. I'm not particularly impressed, but it's forgivable. It's a battle tome. So, you know, you can use it to play the game. Here are a few more images of the new plastic chosen sculpts, and they just look fantastic. I, I really like the the fella on the bottom right with the great hammer. Uh, you get helmeted and non-helmeted options. You get your drummer, your banner bearer. It they're just great. I think they're going to make a great counterpart to the Varengard uh, as an infantry unit to go with your Varengard Elite Cavalry. And the Varengard are one of the best looking models in the game, in my opinion, and I think these, these live up to that. So Slaves to Darkness is looking uh, 
like in pretty good shape so far. So let's speculate a little bit as to the price of the box. Now Games Workshop of course has not officially released the pricing for the box. That's not going to come out for several weeks at least. This is pretty typical for Games Workshop releases. They'll kind of show you all the shiny new toys and get you interested and then uh, later on the prices will get revealed. Um, so it's just how it goes. Um, so don't expect to know the exact pricing until the prices go out to stores and they announce it on the Games Workshop website. But we can make some educated guesses based on previous releases. Now there hasn't been a launch box quite like this in a while for Age of Sigmar. The last one I'm aware of is the Lumineth Realm Lords box in 2020, which was $185. Now, there have been similar boxes in 40k, however. Both the Black Templars and Beast Snaggle Orcs boxes in 2021 were 200 US dollars and very similar in terms of contents to the box um, with what we're getting in the Slaves to Darkness box. So I would um, look at these primarily to come up with our price benchmarks. The Chaos Knights box, which came out more recently, was $265, but this, of course, contained a Chaos Knight, which is a very expensive model, and a number of other things, so it makes sense this one would be more expensive. The Battle Force boxes for Age of Sigmar in 2021 were $210 a pop, and uh, these, of course, have more models, but don't contain a battle tome. So I think we're looking at something kind of around here, or the 40K boxes for the Slaves to Darkness box. For all those reasons, I predict that this box is going to run from between 200 to 220 US dollars. My hope would be for 200, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's more like 210, 220, even 230, anything higher than that, I think is going to start to be a little ridiculous. But inflation has been pretty crazy this year, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little more expensive than comparable boxes over the past couple of years. In uh, UK and the EU, I would estimate 125 to 140 pounds or 155 to 170 euro, respectively, based on similar previous release prices in Europe. Next, let's talk a little bit about the individual value of each item in the box. Now, I think this might be everything you get in the box that I've already talked about. It's possible they throw in some War Scroll cards like they usually have done with the 40k boxes. Um, they haven't shown any dice or anything. I think they might be cutting those and honestly they won't be missed too much. They're kind of nice to have but not, not as important to most players I would think as the models in the Battle Tome. But anyway... Uh, based on the current prices, the Demon Prince is currently $50. I would expect that to go up quite a bit, actually, with the new model. Um, typically, once you move from a resin model to a new, nicer, bigger plastic sculpt, the price goes up quite a bit. So I would you know, expect it to cost at least more like $75, but we'll just leave it where it is for now as to be conservative. Similarly, the Chaos Chosen at a minimum are, are worth $94 based on the current pricing for the old resin units. And the Ogroid Pterodons, a little harder to guess, but based on the price of similar elite infantry or even cavalry units, I'm guessing they're going to be at least $70 to $80. Dollars. These are pretty big models. They might even be more. They might even be more like 90. I don't think they're going to be quite at the 110 like the Varengard, but who knows? Um, my guess is somewhere in the 70 to 80 ballpark. Battle Tome, of course, is going to be $55 unless they raise the price for new Battle Tomes, which I'm not expecting. And overall, that puts the total value at at least $269 uh, by Games Workshop uh, MSRP price scheme. And I'm, we're going to just call the estimated MSRP on the low end 200 since we're being conservative with our price estimates. And that would put the savings at 25% or greater. Um, I'm expecting when we get more info on what these models are going to cost individually and the overall price of the box, the savings will probably land somewhere a little more in the typical ballpark of the 30 to 35 percent that Games Workshop tends to go for with these kinds of releases. So next let's talk about what you're getting in terms of 
points and on the table. Uh, the Demon Prince is 210 points currently. Now, I should say that with the new Battle Tome coming out, it's possible these values could change a little bit. I'm not expecting them to change a lot, given we just got new pitched uh, battle profiles with General's Handbook, and they tend not to make huge changes in the, the Battle Tomes that come out right after, but we'll see. But anyway, back to the Demon Prince. He's kind of a staple of the game in a lot of ways. He's a fighty hero. He's not too crazy expensive. He's got some, uh, you know, unique command abilities depending on which uh, demon mark you give him. And I expect that he's going to get a bit of a buff just because he's got a cool new plastic sculpt that's very imposing. And um, often with the new battle tomes, you see some power creep power improvement of these kind of models so we'll see what he can do in the new battle tome but just nice to see him in the box your chaos chosen or an elite infantry choice they are notably not a battle line if so i mean it's unclear if you're getting any battle line in this box um, maybe the ogroid theradoins would be some kind of battle line if i kind of doubt it but we'll see um this could change too in the new battle tome but the chaos chosen they're they're pretty strong. They're 145 points for a unit of five, so two is giving you 290 points. They're doing three attacks, threes, threes, run negative one, damage one. And the kicker is every six you roll adds a mortal wound on top of any other wounds. So it doesn't, unlike the cruel boys or many other units, you're getting extra mortal wounds on top of your already pretty strong unit. Um, so pretty solid, nice to see in the box. And then your Ogroid Theradons are a big, beefy, elite infantry, monstrous infantry. We'll have to wait to see what they do when their War Scroll is released. I'm guessing that they're going to be somewhere in the ballpark of 200 to 250 points, just based on comparable units. But we'll see. Uh, but that all kind of leads us to you're getting probably at least 700 to 750 points in this box so about a vanguard level force now you need battle line how can you get it you can get the start collecting box start collecting box has 600 points worth of units you can pick up another hero and you're getting your two staples and your chaos knights and chaos warriors i think that'd be a great way to start off with slaves to darkness if you're looking to get into the army and it's going to set you back about 300 dollars, which is not cheap but you could do a lot worse for a thousand point army um in the current current state of age of sigmar um so that's kind of cool so that's all I've got to say about the new Slaves to Darkness release. But before that comes out this winter, um, we also learned that the new battle tomes for destruction are going to be for Ogre Ma tribes, which I'm super excited about, and Sons of Behemoth, which I'm less excited about. Not that I don't like Sons of Behemoth as a faction, but more because it's not Gloom Spike Gits. I was really hoping for Gloom Spike Gits. Uh, my heart goes out to you guys who played Gloom Spike Gits. Hopefully next year, hopefully early next year, they get a new battle tome because they they need it. Um, kind of like Beast of Chaos. But let's get into what uh, what's been announced for Ogre Maw tribes and for Sons of Behemoth. This is a bit of the kind of way it goes for some of these new army releases. Sometimes there's like a big launch like we're seeing with Slaves to Darkness where you get a lot of new stuff. And then sometimes, like with the Nurgle, Skaven, now Sons of Behemoth and Ogre Maw tribes, you just kind of get one new model. So with Sons of Behemoth, that's going to be this King Broad expansion. It's not actually its own kit. It's going to be an expansion kit for the Mega Gargant kit. That's kind of a bummer because the Mega Gargant kit already cost $200. And I expect this to be at least another 30 maybe even $50 US dollars. So it's expensive. But it is a cool model, I'll give it that. Um, it's nice to see kind of a unique named character making its way into Sons of Behemoth. Uh, they can do some cool things with the lore. There's not a ton out there about him other than he has the skull of a dragon on his head and wants to rebuild this temple to Behemoth. So, eh, I like the model. Um, Sons of Behemoth isn't really my cup of tea in a lot of ways, but I think this guy looks really cool. 
Ogre Ma Tribes gets uh, this guy that I both hate and love. It's the Blood Pelt Hunter. And I think that this is going to be more of a Beast Claw Raiders kind of model, given the snow and the pelts. But they haven't specifically said. And I'm wondering, because he's on foot, if this might be one that can be used in either. Or if in the new Battle Tome they're going to be moving to more towards a... Uh, more cohesive option to use kind of both sides of Ogre Maw tribes in addition to both the Beast Claw Raiders and the kind of more typical um, Ogres. We'll see. Um, but this guy's cool. He's going to be a ranged hero that I'm guessing will do a lot of damage since he carries a ballista around and has a dragon's head on his belt. But uh, it's a cool model. Um, I'm excited to see a new Ogre Maw tribes battle tome as well. And uh, Warhammer Underworlds is uh, getting a new warband in the Gore Chosen of Drom. It's a it's a corn warband, um, so it, it's it's chaos guys. The motifs here include uh, no shirt, fire, spikes, the color red, and uh, it's really just nice to see because that's like a really unique. Um, really unique style for for these kind of war bands so um definitely can't have too much of that anyway uh the cursed city is getting a new um new expansion it it doesn't really look very exciting to me i don't play cursed city so if, if you really like the board game cursed city you might want it but it doesn't include any models it was a little misleading the community page because they picture these big pictures of the three uh vampire lords you get um it has rules for annika kritza the rat guy and uh the regular vampire lord to add them to the cursed city game but it doesn't come with the miniatures so hopefully it's cheap it's just a bunch of cards and rules for curse city but uh that's kind of a bummer it would have been nice to see those heroes bundled um even if it cost more i think a lot of people want to have the miniatures but if you already play soul blight grave lords and you also like the the game this might work out better for you you don't have to having to buy extra models so pros and cons Hey, thank you so much for watching the video as always. And if you enjoyed the video, uh, consider doing all that stuff that uh, people say on YouTube. Like you could, you could click the little thumbs up button. You could, you could subscribe to my channel. You know, you could even, you could even leave me a little comment and tell me about your day, or let me know what you think of the new plastic slaves to darkness sculpts. Do you like them? Do, do you not? Anyway, uh, keep on hobbying and uh, let me know your thoughts on the new releases and I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Bye.